Here we have platelets. Erythrocytes, also known as red blood cells. And on to the white blood cells. First one is neutrophils. We have the eosinophils. Basophils. Monocytes, and lastly, lymphocytes. All right, we're going to be going over the structures of your heart here. Uh, first structure is going to be the visceral pericardium, and that's just going to be right on the surface of the heart. It's going to be all visceral pericardium. Next, we're going to have the pericardial cavity, which will be a space right outside of that uh, visceral pericardium. And next we would have the parietal pericardium, which is right outside the pericardial space. So I drew a picture for you of our wrong heart here. But so here we have our visceral pericardium just sitting right on the surface of our heart. Okay. Right outside of that we have a pericardial cavity. So that's just the empty space. And outside of that we have your parietal pericardium. Just be this right outside of that. Okay? Alright, next we have your base and your apex. So your apex is going to be the tip down here, inferior. The base is going to be superior. It's going to be up here, just where all of these blood vessels are coming out. So just know the base is superior, up on top here. Okay, next we have endocardium, myocardium, and epicardium. So I'm going to start with myocardium. Myocardium is going to be all of this darker, darker colored structure. Um, myo means muscle, so think of that as being the muscle. Okay. Endocardium is going to be this pink layer on the surface where blood would come into contact with it. So, so that's going to be your endocardium. Okay. Then your epicardium. Epicardium would just be the outside surface of the heart. Okay? So if I'm sitting with my heart like this, remember this is going to be my right side, this is going to be my left side. Okay? So you got right, left, superior, inferior. Right? So here we're going to have your right auricle, this structure here, and here we're going to have your left auricle. Those sit right above the atria, and so what they do is they are just a extra pocket for excess blood to go into. They're called auricles because early anatomists thought they looked like ears. Okay. Next we have your right and left atria. So if I open this up, I can see here my right atrium. this space here. My left atrium would be right underneath of this left auricle, but does not come open in this model. Okay, and then we have my right and left ventricles. Here I'm going to have my right ventricle, will be this space here. Here I'm going to have my left ventricle be this space here. So when blood comes into the heart, it's going to come into the atrium. Then the atrium will contract and push the blood down into the ventricle. And then the ventricle will contract and push the blood out. Okay. So then our right atrioventricular valve or tricuspid valve is this structure here. I turn my heart, you can see in there, so it would be the space that my stick is going through. 
So that's going to be your tricuspid valve. Okay, and then my left atrioventricular valve, or my bicuspid valve, is going to be on the right side, and you can't, it's closed up here, but it would be between the left atrium and the left ventricle. Sits the left atrioventricular valve, or the bicuspid valve. One way to remember that is just remember that you ride a trike before you ride a bike. So we have tricuspid valve and bicuspid valve. Okay? Then we're going to have your right semilunar valve or your pulmonary valve. And that's just going to be this structure right here. And that's going to be blood's going to flow from your right ventricle out into your pulmonary trunk, out to your lungs through this valve. So that's your pulmonary valve. Okay? Then we're going to have your left semilunar valve or your aortic valve. You can see that right there. And so blood will flow from your left ventricle through that, uh, through that aortic valve or left semilunar valve out into the aorta. Okay? Then we're going to have your interatrial septa, inter, interatrial septa, and so we can't see that on here, but an interatrial septa would just sit between the two atrium, okay? So we can see our interventricular septa is just right here. All it is, is it's just showing that there's a separation between that right ventricle and left ventricle, okay? And then we also have atrial ventricular septa, and that would be just the separation, so all this structure between the right atria and right ventricle, and it would be the same thing over here. This would also be atrial ventricular septa, it's just a separation between the left atria and the left ventricle. Okay. So next we have chordae tendinae, and these are the little cord-like structures attached to the valves. So just these little structures here is the chordae tendinae, and it's attaching to that tricuspid valve, and it just helps regulate the uh, opening and closing of that valve. You also have chordae, chordae tendinae over here attached to your bicuspid valve. Okay. Next we have your papillary muscles. Your papillary muscles are just these structures here that the chordae tendinae attach to. So there'd be one here, and also you can see one here. Those are just going to help regulate the opening and closing of those valves. Okay. Then you have trabeculae carnae, and trabeculae carnae is just all the ridges that you see inside of the heart. That would be your trabeculae carnae. Okay. Then we're going to see your aorta. And it's going to be this structure here. And that's just going to be the big blood vessel where all the oxygenated, oxygen, oxygenated blood is going to flow out to the body. So this is your aorta. Okay. Then we're going to have your if I turn around, so now I'm looking at a posterior view of the heart, so I'm looking from the back. I see right here is my superior vena cava, and that's just where deoxygenated blood is flowing back into the heart. So it's going to flow through the superior vena cava into that right atrium. Okay? So then if we look from an inferior view, so now we're looking at an inferior view of the heart. This here is going to be by inferior vena cava, and deoxygenated, deoxygenated blood will flow right into that right atrium from here as well. So if I turn this up to get you oriented, you can see here would be the inferior vena cava, here would be your superior vena cava. Okay? Next we're going to have your pulmonary trunk, so I'm going to turn the heart back around. 
We're going to be looking at an anterior view of the heart again here. Okay, and so my pulmonary trunk is just this trunk here. And so deoxygenated blood will flow from the right ventricle through that right semilunar valve into this pulmonary trunk and then it'll go out into the lungs. Okay, it's also called the pulmonary artery. And so something to note is that this is one of the few arteries that carries uh, deoxygenated blood. Okay, then if I flip around to the back again, so I'm looking at a posterior view of the heart. I can see here my pulmonary veins, okay, right there as well. And the pulmonary veins carry oxygenated blood back to the heart from the lungs. So this is one of the very few places where you're actually going to see uh, veins carrying oxygenated blood, okay, back into the heart. All right, we're going to be looking at the coronary blood vessels of the heart here. The coronary blood vessels of the heart carry blood, um, oxygenated blood out to the heart. The heart is like any other muscle, so it's going to need oxygenated blood just like any of the other muscles of your body. So that's what your coronary vessels do. All right, so the first one we're going to look at here is going to be your left coronary artery. And where we can see that is if we take this piece off, just this little piece right there, that would be the left coronary artery. Your left coronary artery is going to run underneath this pulmonary trunk and this uh, left article. Up, and so it's going to, blood is going to flow from the aorta out through that left coronary artery. Okay? So branches, then there's going to be branches of that left coronary artery. First branch is going to be your anterior interventricular artery. Okay? So if we're looking at the heart, just straight dead on anteriorly. Running right down the middle is your anterior interventricular artery. Sitting right next to it is your anterior interventricular vein, also known as the great cardiac vein. I just remember anterior interventricular vein because it's a little bit easier to remember. All right. So then, if I take my heart and I turn it a quarter turn to the left, so now I'm looking uh, straight at the heart from the left side. So running right down the left side of your heart is going to be your left marginal artery and that's going to be the second branch of your left coronary artery. Okay, So we have left coronary artery, left coronary artery and left marginal artery. And then running next to that left marginal artery is going to be your left marginal vein. Okay. Alright, so then if I take my heart, we're going to rotate back to start. And then we're going to take our heart and we're going to look at the right coronary artery next. So we're going to turn it a quarter turn to the right. So now we're looking at the heart just right from the right side of your body. This will be your right coronary artery. Okay. And the branch that you're going to need to know that one is going to be your right marginal artery. It's going to be this one here. It runs right down the right side of the heart. And you're going to be able to see that there's two branches here. What you're going to need to know is the second one, is the right marginal artery. It goes down farther than the first one up here. You don't need to know the first one for this class. You just need to know right marginal artery. Running right next to it is the right marginal vein. Okay. So I'm going to take my heart. I'm going to turn a quarter turn again. So now we're looking posteriorly and inferiorly. So this... This here is still your right coronary artery. And this branch on the back, so the posterior and inferior part of the heart, this is going to be your posterior interventricular artery. It's a branch of that right coronary artery. Running right next to it is your posterior interventricular vein, also known as your middle cardiac vein. All right? And one last structure that you need to know is this right here is going to be your coronary sinus and that's where deoxygenated blood is going to flow from the heart back into your right atrium. So if I flip around to the front, open this up, here's my right atrium. There I can see where that blood from that coronary sinus goes back into the right atrium.